and then in fourth place from Cambridge Boat Club, w within a half a second of bar, is Mike Wilson. Uh, we, we do have some, some shake-ups with that, too. We also have uh, Lawton joining us from Great Britain, who seems to be putting on a push here, uh, as well as the second Undyne crew uh, from bout number 16, Colin Stewart, a uh, recent graduate from Drexel and the coach of Ocean City High School. Yeah, through, uh, through Riverside, Lawton was running in, in fourth place, just about five or six seconds behind Higgins, which is, you know, two lengths, uh, yeah, not, for, not much distance. For an 18-minute uh, race, that is a negligible amount of time. Yeah, singles, you can, okay, and we, ha we, we can see our first sculler coming up the course now. So this is, this is um, um, Jack Higgins from Undyne in Philadelphia. It's right on the buoys. So those of you up on the bridge or here at CBC, you'll see him coming around the corner. Uh, he is right along the buoy line there and straightening out a little bit more. Uh, as we were just speaking about earlier, this is a long, almost 180 degree turn. So it is advantageous to stay right along the buoys as you come up and around. Right, so the, at the start, they try, to, they try to space the scullers two to three lengths apart from each other. So when you look at spacing here, um, a length is about two and a half seconds. Sorry, two seconds. So you can get an idea of how he's doing relative to starting position. So our, our athletes are coming down in order. That is, again, Jack Higgins from Undyne going under the bridge. Uh, followed, followed by Victor Korja. From Occoquan. Occoquan. And then Michael Wilson. Bow three is Mike Wilson from CBC. Mike has fans on the bridge. <laughs> yes, you'll always hear some cheering for the hometown favorites here. And I, I got to have more cowbell. <laughs> and bow four from Potomac, Andrew Weinstein. Followed by bow number five from Seattle and Seattle Scullers, Robert Murray. And Robert's coached by former CBC of, uh, friend Matt Zatorski. And those of you watching will see that these crews are a little more bunched up. So that means there has been some changes in pacing, clearly. Six across from us. Tight to the buoy line, James Barr is the head coach for the Holy Cross men. Father of two. That, that, is, that means a lot as far as training goes. Followed by bow number seven, um, Florian Carl from Great River in Shelton, Connecticut. And uh, as of those of you watching at home or with a program of notice, we're going in order so far. However, we now have our first change in order. Uh, from Riverside, Alan Wu, bow number nine, has overtaken Cody Webkin from Cincinnati. And bow number 10 from Westside Rowing. Just hit a crab. Oh, oh, yep. Bow number 10 from Westside Rowing, Stephen Rupp. I'm going to go up the mic a little bit just report what I see. I see it. Bow number 11 in Maroon. And now we have bow number 11 in Maroon from Flower City in Rochester, Frank Sankey. In the yellow boat from Penn AC, Eamon Glavin from Penn AC. Eamon is one of the uh, more prolific videographers of the sport. 15, 18, okay, now we've got some mix-ups in the bow order, which means there's been some passing going on from 15, High Point University, Ethan Perry, um, from Undyne, Colin Stewart, and from um, bow number 18, Northwich, uh, from Cheshire um, in the UK, George Lawton. Yeah, 
lot right across from us right now. Let me have that. High visibility 14. Got, got 19. 19. Okay, and the white shirt and the yellow boat with the CBC blades from De Hope in Amsterdam, Floris Lofen. Floris' most recent racing this summer was in the um, Thames Cup at Henley. He's also uh, a, an alum of Neris, um, one of the big university clubs in Amsterdam, and he was a member of the Dutch U23 team a few years ago. And bow number 14 from Quinsigamon Rowing Club, Ross Zuckerman. Yes, who's, uh, whose wife is actually one of our volunteers this weekend on the announcing committee. And an Olympian. Yes, not, yeah. to, be, uh, not to be forgotten. Yeah. So you get Multi-time Olympian. So you get motivation and coaching on the home front. <laughs> And uh, we do have a little bit of a gap here. So as we were saying, they do try to start all the singles roughly two seconds apart at the start. This gap could indicate a uh, change in order. Uh, oh, and we have a large flock of geese uh, swarming our rowers now. It is an outdoor sport. <laughs> okay, and here's bow number 23, Chris Clark, um, who's a, a Bromfield Acton Boxborough alum and, and, and Holy Cross alum. Followed by bow 20 from CRI, Will Messenger, who's a, a Brandeis student and a member of the CRI competitive team. And on the Boston side from Undyne, um, Undyne, Noah Tichi. Followed by bow 13, uh, Dylan Chan from Dallas, Texas. And entering the bridge, bow number 22 from Pittsburgh, uh, Maxime Gamanko. And bow 24 from University, Andrew Grubel, who's a, a prep Cornell um, alum with, me, with, with a lot of post-grad racing experience. About what? And from Seattle Scholars, uh, Derek Heath, who's another, uh, another um, athlete coached by um, Matt Zatorski. But well, we do have some unofficial times now. Again, uh, these are just the crews that have crossed the finish line. Anything can happen since this is head style racing. Uh, initial unofficial times seem to be 18.23 at the top. So uh, about 20 seconds off the course record. Uh, there's very little wind today. Last year there was a very pleasant tailwind. Yeah. Pushing courses down the powerhouse stretch, which I think was uh, one of the benefits that helped so many records fall last year. Yeah, the top time right now is, like, like I said, 18.23. So that's still a, a very respectable time. And a, a tailwind is good for 20 or 30 seconds. Okay, bell 30 from, uh, well, that's Liam Jenkins rowing unaffiliated. He's a, a Tufts alum. And Liam had passed bow number 28 from Occoquan, um, Maxwell um, Dulkin, who's a, a George Mason alum, um, wrote, learned how to row under Bob Spousta, who's a Charles River legend. Entering the bridge, 34, right behind them. And now we have bow number 32, Independence Rowing Club, Michael Carenza Schultz, followed by bow number 34, Edward Laundress from, from Undyne. 29, and all in red. And on the... Uh, Inside from San Diego, uh, Joel Whaling. Um, followed by bow number 31, Michael Bain, who's a sophomore at, at, at Northeastern. So he's sneaking in some, uh, some sculling between, um, between classes. And bow number 33 with the CRI Blades from Calgary, uh, Nicholas Kraus. He's a seasoned Calgary rowing club veteran, having previously won Henley in the men's quad.
27? 27. Okay, bow number 27 with the CBC Blades, um, Russell Murphy. Russell actually grew up at Cambridge, so he's, he's, he's been on the river his entire life. Currently on active duty in the Navy um, in Florida, learned how to row in a parent-child double, as many of us did, <laughs> many of us did here, um, and has rowed in the Director's Challenge um, in, 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 with his dad. I think he might be doing it again this year. 39. Followed by bow number 39, uh, Dominican University, Dante um, Galisteo from Argentina. He's a sophomore at Dominican. Yeah, I missed Argentina earlier when I said the, because we, we've got we've got a couple of dozen different countries here this year. Yes, our uh, our uh, nationality indicators go off your uh, registered club designations. Yes. So uh, Dante's rowing for Dominican University out of New York. So uh, we only saw that he's uh, you know listed it's as a, a USA scholar, but I guess a, he could it's also in the, it's in the notes. He could row under a different flag if he wished. Okay, and now bow number 35, um, rowing for uh, New York, uh, NYU, um, Rahul um, Jayachandran uh, from uh, Glastonbury in Connecticut um, High School um, and uh, Riverfront Recapture. So he's uh, making his first appearance here in the single. Welcome to, welcome to Boston in small boats. Yes, uh, Riverfront Recapture rows on the Connecticut River right in downtown Hartford. They are essentially the Hartford equivalent of CRI. And bow number 36, Matthew uh, Kosinski, worked up in Craftsbury, um, running the uh, sculling school up there for, for four or five years for the, uh, the nine to 15 year olds, and then moved out to Quad Cities um, to coach there, and uh, uh, met his wife, Grace, got, got married, and uh, she is now coaching him. So again, some of that motivation and, uh, and uh, coaching at the same time. Yes, you will not get to sleep in and miss practice, that's for <laughs> sure. Uh, so we have a couple more rowers in this event coming down the course, and then it appears we have the start of the next event right on their tails. In the red hull, in the one. in the red hull bow number thirty-seven, Hollywood Rowing Club, Frank Fuentes, uh, first attempt on on the Charles. I'd say he's doing better than attempting it. Um, uh, first attempt in a single. And then bow number forty. Yes, that's uh, Luke Walters from Pittsburgh. And then bow number one, who is overtaking him, which is. Uh, Adam Randall, bow number one of the event number 10, the men's master, senior master single. So that's the 30 plus, 40 plus designation. Uh, they had a start time of 7.56. Yeah, here we, yeah. So, they, so they, he's, they, he's flying down the course. He's flying. So they try to take some, uh, some gaps between the races, but, but fast is fast. Um, got a couple of seconds before the next clump of the next race come. Uh, there was there was a fast one in the pack right now, unofficially from Northwich. Um, um, you've got George Lawton uh, at the top of the field um, in the um, in the um, in the club single, followed by Jack Higgins from Undyne, um, and less than a second separating those two. And then from um, the, uh, six, the the the, seven, the De Hope entry four. is unofficially in third. And now in front of us in the current event, we have bow number six out in front, Cody Lowry from Undyne, yep. Ex followed uh, by lightweight national team alum, Lee well, Greathouse. Yep, from down the river at Union, and then Luke Willem from Sacred Heart down in Connecticut. And now right in front of CBC is Jeffrey Toto, bow number eight uh, down river from us from Union Boat Club. Yep, coach down at BC High. One of John Lindbergh's scholars. Approaching as high 
five is bound number nine, Mercer. And approaching CPC, bow number nine um, from uh, Princeton National Rowing Association down in Princeton Junction, um, PNRA Mercer, PJ Caputa. So in addition to rowing, uh, PJ is a, uh, is a referee and uh, in, in, in an indoor, um, indoor erg um, championships um, competitor, father of six, that's Masters Rowing. Now, if we're looking at the, uh, the, the pace of the rowers who've gone by and last year's results, uh, so this, this event actually has two different designations. You have your Masters, uh, so that's the 30 plus, and Senior Masters, 40 plus designations, and there's separate records for each. The Masters designation, the, the record has stood since 2017, that's a time of 18, 13 and change. Uh, just by judging how Adam Randall was doing as he passed, he may be on pace there. And we have more rowers in front of us now. And out in front is bow number 10. From San Diego Rowing Club, Evan Day. 14, 11. Bow number 11, Holyoke Rose, Zach DePace. And bow number 14, Timothy Wong from Minnesota. And bow number 17 with the blue oars with the dark blue and white stripe across it from Maritime down in East Norwalk, Brendan McEwen. Brendan's a four-time winner. So um, back to that back of the pack stuff. Through Weld, um, bow number 29, Alex Twist from Riverside was actually running ahead of, of, of Brendan McEwen from, from Maritime and Adam Randall. So bow number 29, then bow number 17, then bow number one. And uh, in front of us now, we have Randy Wilhelm uh, rowing in the senior master designation out of Maritime. And then we have another group of rowers approaching us now. And bow number 12 from um, the UK, Oriel Kensington's Ilya Kacentikas. Uh, bow number 16 from uh, Detroit Boat Club, the oldest boat club in the year. Well, it's a debate whether it's that or Narragansett, but Detroit DBC's Michael Dazi. Uh, we can let them fight that out. Uh, looks like Riverside, bow number 20. And then Riverside, bow number 20, Alex Barat. 15. Bow number 15 from um, Oklahoma R o OKC River Sport, William Massimini. And bow 22 um, from Austria. Uh, the Wiener Ruder Club in Vienna. It's uh, Steven Zimmerman. Yes, again, we, we love to welcome our international competitors to here to the Charles. Uh, this is truly an international event. We have, uh, I actually never got the final head count, but it, it must be close to triple digits of international competitors here today. Uh, I know Olympians, uh, national and international, we have over a hundred who competed in Paris uh, this past summer. Okay, we have yet to see um, Alex Twist come through CBC. Right now, the fastest time through this marker um, was 1524. It was Brendan McEwen from Maritime. Um, and again, it's about three minutes to the, to the, um, to the finish line. So, you know, you add on, you add three minutes onto that, and they're running a little bit under course record pace, a little bit, fat, a little bit slower than course record pace. Okay, and here, here's Alex Twist, Riverside six. Bow 29, who's passed Bow number 26 for Maritime, Jeffrey Hoffman. Alex taking the inside line on the, on the, on the Elliott turn. He'll then cross over to take the, the, the dock tightly at, at Belmont Hill, Windsor. Which again, it is worth noting, although they list on the uh, finish sheet in order, they are really two events going on at the same time. Yeah. So the, the rower next to you or in front of you might not even be racing in your race. They that could was have a, a different that was, age That was a nicely executed pass because you'll see it's a, it's a crossover like you see in speed skating. And Alex got in front of the guy that he had just passed on this turn and then switched over to the, 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 the other side of the river. And they, they, they cooperated very well on that. Yes, that was very smooth. And then entering the Elliott Bridge and now exiting the Elliott Bridge, that was uh, Eric Schultz of Argonaut, another one of our visitors from Canada. 
And here's bow number 24 from Conshohocken, Eric Menz, followed by, from Turkey, um, the, the Bogaz, Boza, Bogazaki um, Club in Istanbul. It's Karim Khan Ertug, who's 49 years old. So he's rowing at the top ba of the division. Bawazachi. I know that feeling. <laughs> Okay. Bow number 18. Bow number 18 from uh, Shanghai uh, UC Rowing Club, Jack Zun. And Jack just made a great correction there when approaching the bridge. He was taking it a little bit wide. Uh, I, he would have either hit the abutment or had to readjust. Now, there is a safe lane of passage on the Cambridge side, but you have to hold water and pivot quickly on the other side because of the Belmont Hill dock. Yeah. It is generally not, it's a, it's a it's, what you call a, a course of last resort. Yes, that's, uh, you know, those off ramps for the 18 wheelers to go on when they lose their brakes. It's, it's like one of those. That is exactly what it is. Let's see, uh, 34, and then right off our nine, Okay, and here, coming in front of the Cambridge Boat Club, bow number 34 from Undyne, Shane Madden. And bow number 33 from Atlanta, Charles Wu. Both of these guys are former RBC guys. Go Stripes. RBC always does have a very uh, competitive program, and they put out a good showing, especially well, they, in these and, age classes. And, and, and RBC is known for 20-somethings. Yes. So as they move up into their 30s and their 40s and they finish grad school, they, 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 they spread out. Kind of like, like Red Sox fans. <laughs> In front of us now is Andrew Millspa. Uh, he is uh, unaffiliated with any club, but rode out of Niskayuna High School and the University of Delaware. Okay, and unofficially through the finish at this point with twist yet to come through, it's McEwen, Randall, and Schaefer in first, second, and third. Uh, Finish time was around 18:30, so um, 18:27, so 12 seconds off course record, which is a pretty, still pretty fast river. Bow number, but yep, yeah, we got 29. Yep. We missed it by three tenths of a second. It does look like the unofficial time for Andrew Twist is uh, he may have missed Alex, the record. Alex, Alex yeah. Twist may have missed the record by two tenths, two and a half tenths. Yep. So Alex, Alex, right oh, now did an 18. We, we have a little bit of a battle in front nine. of us. Uh, 35 and 37 are right in front of us, jockeying for space. Uh, 35 is Stephen Lamberts from Red Arrow, next to Vladimir Pavlovsky from Potomac. Uh, I believe he's competing in a few events and coached several events as well. He's a former Ukrainian national team rower. And in front of us right now, we have Brian Pack of Cincinnati. And in bright, high visibility orange, uh, Henrik Moda of Ro LA. Uh, not quite LA weather right now, but give it a couple hours and it, it should be more comfortable for uh, Henrik here. It is a layers kind of day. It's gonna hit 70 today. And in front of us is bow number two. Uh, okay. So we, Which we, this we, is we not have the for the next event. The women's club singles are on the That's course. <laughs> so this is Richard Connell oh, okay. of Middlebury. Uh, okay, I suspect, so we didn't have that much overlap. I, I suspect uh, there may have been no, a had, shuffle he, he, at the start. Yeah, or, shuffle or at the delayed. start, definitely. Yeah. You know how Boston traffic is. Sometimes you don't get out on the yeah. river in time, so you miss your start and, by a couple And generally minutes. they make you wait until the end. You get bumped to the bottom. Yep. Uh, the starters will generally, if they think you're going to be overtaking quite a bit, they'll give you a little more of a gap, but not much of a gap no. because they don't want to delay the next event. That being said, the first woman's sculler in the club single is through they, no, they, they, they just showed they just showed bow number two being uh, Bushman from White Marsh. That might have no, that can't be right. That had that had to be that had to be the guy from from prior race. Yeah, sorry.